Guidelines for the Implementation of Weighing Systems Instructions for the correct installation of weighing components, load cells and mounting kits, weight indicators, and weight transmitters. Load cells installation, planarity and indeformability of the support plates, compliance with mounting surface and load direction, installation of single point load cells. Check that the load cells support plates are coplanar and, as a rule, planar. Use suitable mounting kits to compensate for any misalignment of the support plates. The support plates must be sufficiently rigid and non-deformable. For shear beam, bending beam, and single point load cells, it is necessary to comply with the mounting surface stated on the data sheet. Pay attention to the load direction stated on the data sheet or on the load cell body. This must be oriented towards the same direction of the applied force. For safety reasons, it is recommended to use the load cells at a maximum of 70 to 80% of their nominal capacity. In case of weighing of structures with four supports, consider that the load will not be uniformly distributed and that 85 to 90% of the applied load will be distributed on just three supports. Single point load cells are able to weigh correctly within an area stated on the data sheet. For example, using a load cell guaranteed for an area of 400 to 400 millimeters, we are certain that by applying a weight force at any point of a structure of such dimensions, the detection will be correct. By installing a structure with a larger size than that stated on the data sheet, or by applying an object that protrudes from the structure, it is possible to damage the single point load cell and, in any case, obtain an incorrect weight value. Mechanical constraints, frictions, piping. The more a weighed structure is free from friction, the more a weighing system is precise. When piping are present, make sure that the pipe to be anchored to the weighed structure is close and aligned with the nozzle to which it will be clamped. Mechanical constraints can be limited by using flexible hoses and flexible or free couplings with rubber protection, for example, bellows type. Alternatively, Place the first anchoring bracket in the horizontal section as far as possible from the weighed structure, at least 40 times the diameter of the pipe. To verify the correct mechanical installation of the weighing system, proceed as follows. Carry out the zeroing of the weight indicator. Apply a force to the system. Remove it. The indicator has to return perfectly to zero. In case of weighing systems with several load cells, repeat this operation in correspondence with each load cell. When the system is loaded, the weight values are similar on each load cell. When the system system is unloaded, the weight value is zero. Load cells connected in parallel. To connect several load cells in parallel, use a waterproof junction box with a suitable terminal board or a multi-channel transmitter in a box. The incoming and outgoing cables from the box or from the multi-channel transmitter require the installation of cable glands. The extension cables used for connection must be shielded. It is recommended to use a six-wire cable with reference sense management, able to compensate for the voltage drop due to the distance between the devices. Ideally, it must be inserted alone into the wireway and laid as far as possible from the power cables. When using four conductor connection cables, consider a minimum section of one square millimeter and preferably not exceed 300 meters in length. Welding. 
it is recommended to avoid welding while the load cells are installed. If this cannot be avoided, place the welder ground clamp close to the required welding point to prevent sending current through the load cell body. Constraints positioning, wind, shocks, vibrations, horizontal forces, tilting. Several mounting kits are available. Their purpose is to obtain a correct installation of the load cell and the maximum reliability and precision compatibility with the mechanical, electrical, and pneumatic connections on the structure to be weighed. In weighing systems, with multiple load cells, it is recommended to place constraints to act against any lateral forces. The system designer will have to evaluate whether the standard mounting kits are sufficient for this purpose or whether to provide further measures according to shocks and vibrations, wind pressure, seismic classification of the installation area, strength of the support plates. Making constraints able to act against the horizontal forces allows the load cells to work correctly, avoiding potentially damaging stresses. The realization of anti-tilt constraint is appropriate in weighing systems such as silos, tanks, or structures placed outdoors and potentially subjected to wind pressure, earthquakes, accidental impacts with operating vehicles such as trucks, forklifts, and other similar situations. Silos weighing, structures with legs. If the weighing system is applied to structures with legs or silos, it is always necessary to check that the supports are connected to each other. If not, connect them properly. Electrostatic charges, grounding of the weighed structure. Electrostatic charges are potentially capable of damaging the load cells. For this reason, it is recommended to connect by a copper wire of adequate cross-section the upper support plate of each load cell with the relative lower plate. Then connect all the lower plates together to the same grounding system. In this way, the electrostatic charges are discharged to the ground without crossing and without damaging the load cells. Making a proper grounding system prevents damage to the load cells and to the devices connected to them. It is strictly forbidden to ensure grounding system continuity by using metal parts of the weighed structure. Guidelines for the correct installation of electronic devices, weight indicators, and weight transmitters. The load cell cable must be autonomous and not pass through the wireway with other cables. It is recommended to connect it directly to the weight indicator or transmitter without interruptions and without terminal boards. It is recommended not to install electronic devices in an electrical panel containing inverters. However, if this cannot be avoided, install special filters and insert separation plates between the inverters. In case of power supply 230 VAC, a 380 to 230 VAC transformer must be used. Do not use a 380 VAC phase and the neutral one. The person in charge of the electrical panel must prepare and install all the electrical protections needed to ensure the safety of the plant. It is recommended to always keep the devices powered in order to avoid condensation.